Hey guys, what's up? So, a few years ago I made a, a battery rejuvenation recovery video. It seemed like it was pretty popular, but uh, so it's been a couple years and I want to rejuvenate these batteries again. And I'm going to do a couple different methods, um, like the zap meth method with the uh, battery charger. And also I'm going to do a heavy deep discharge with this new charger I got. Uh, you know, deep discharge and then fully recharge and then deep discharge. I'm going to do that about five or ten times. We'll see how it goes. But uh, I want to first do the zap method, you know, by actually over over voltage and, and over amping the uh, the batteries. I'll show you that with my battery charger. But the reason why you're doing this is because these batteries, if you don't fully discharge them after a while, or do a deep discharge, they uh, build up a thing called dendrite crystals. And the dendrite crystals they they prevent the flow of electrons in the cell. So. This is not an ICAD, this is a lithium ion. So there, this, the cell internally would build uh, uh, dendrite crystals and it would prevent the electrons from flowing from one side to the other. So that's what you're going to try to do. You're trying to try to break up the dendrite crystals. And also doing a deep discharge to zero and a full recharge also helps break up those crystals. So that's actually what's killing the batteries, is the dendrite crystals, at least in an ICAD battery. Alright, so I'm going to first check the polarity. I want to make sure that's right because if you do a zap, you could permanently destroy the batteries if you hit the, the polarity on the wrong side with the zap. So I want to first figure out what side is positive and what side is negative. So I know this side is negative and this side is positive. So if it was the, if you saw the negative on the multimeter, then you know you have it reversed. See the negative right there? So I know this is the right side. Right side, wrong side. See the negative? All right. So I already marked on my battery last time what size is positive and what size is negative. So, um, I'm, okay, I'm going to grab my battery charger and we're going to zap this thing. Alright, so I want to first show you that these things basically have no juice. So that thing doesn't even really move. So this one had about 7.5 volts. Alright. So these things haven't been touched in about a year and a half. About a year, year and a half. I can't remember. But yeah, I've actually had this drill for probably over 20 years. Since I was a teenager, so... Yeah, over 20 years, so... Alright, so here, here's the battery charger. Um, this is like an old school battery charger. It's not a smart charger, but you can't do this with a smart charger. You have to do it with like an old school, like, dummy charger. Alright, so that's an old Schumacher I got at uh, one of these auto parts stores a long time ago. So I'm going to put this on a uh, 30 amp, 35 amp, and this is obviously a 9.6 volt battery, and I'm going to be hitting 12 volts and 35 amp. Alright, so I have an alligator clip that goes from here to the negative side, negative lead on the battery, and then I'm going to hit it with this little nail, probably like 10 times. I'm just going to try to shock the cell, shock the battery. Alright, so I'm going to tap it a couple times here. should see some sparks. So that's uh, 12 volt, uh, 32 amp, or 35 amp. You can see the sparks. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just kind of hitting it. I mean, I'm not counting. Alright, so now the trick is to totally discharge these batteries. Now I'm going to fully discharge them to like zero volts. And uh, I'm going to do a full recharge and then I'm going to see how much, how many milliamps or how many amp hours this thing actually brings back in. Alright, so the next step is you want to fully discharge the battery. So if you don't have a fancy battery charger like this, you can just hook this thing up to like a fan or some kind of light bulb or LED. But you want to fully discharge this battery. Um, actually, I learned this from... <laughs> I used to be in remote control cars like 20 years ago, like RC10s and stuff, and that's what we used to do with the nightcap batteries. We'd fully discharge the batteries before we'd recharge them again. Alright, so the big All fan right. wouldn't work. It just didn't have enough juice in the battery. So let me show you this real fast. So what I'd want to do is just hook this up. See that little fan right there? And I just let this thing run. It totally, totally discharged. Alright, so I have a fancy battery charger, so or discharger, so I can uh, I can see what's actually going on on the screen here. 
So that's like, one of them I'm actually going to keep on the fan. And the other one I'm going to keep on the uh, charger. So the uh, fan already stopped already. So, but this is definitely not the best solution for the discharge. An old school light bulb is what we used to use in the past. All right, so I'm gonna hook up an old light bulb to this thing, and then not an LED, an old school light bulb. All right, so I decided to make a an old old school uh, discharge bulb. So it's just basically like an old automotive light. Like I said, you can't use an LED. LEDs won't work right. And then it's a couple leads on it. So let's see, I'm going to hook up to this uh, battery here. Uh, and that's going to basically go out. But even when it still, even when it goes out, it's still going to be drawing uh, current. Alright, well this one's discharging. I'm going to charge this one up here. It's very faint, but it's, it's flickering. Alright, so this thing's here, it's fully charged. Let's see if the voltage is a little bit warm. Alright. 11 volts. Alright. Three at nine point six volts. I'll check it again a little bit to see if the surface charge comes off, but it's actually rated at one point seven amp hours. All right, so now that I have this one battery using the old school discharger method, I'm going to use the more high tech version of this. So this is a nine point six volt battery, and I know the typical cell voltage is around one point two volts. So if you divide that by nine point six, you get about eight cells. So I'm going to put this into my little thing here. I know the negative is over here. Positive is over here. Alright, and I just charged this battery. It shows I'm getting 10.7 uh, volts. So I'm going to go down to discharge. And it's on NICAD. You can see that. Bring that in. Alright. So we're going to do a discharge here. So right now it's at the charge. We're going to make sure it's at the discharge. Uh, cell count is eight, eight cells, and we'll do a uh, 0.2 amp discharge. And let's do that. All right, discharging. So we'll come back, and we'll see what the thing pulls. All right, so the discharge is done, and it pulled 351 milliamp hours. So I'm going to keep on charge. I'm going to charge it again. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to do this probably about five times. All right, doing a quick charge, and this will probably take a couple of hours. All right, so it pulled 1.19 amp hour, and these batteries were rated at 1.7. So that's actually not bad, considering this battery is probably about 20 years old. So I'm going to keep on discharging it and charging it, and we'll see what we get. All right, it's getting better. Six. And then I'm going to do a charge again. It's going to keep on going down and create a list. Alright guys, so halfway through the process of uh, doing the repair video, I got a new charger. Um, one of the things I didn't like about this ISD D charger was it wouldn't cycle. So, another cool feature too that I can connect it to my computer. Let me show you this real quick. So I'm going to charge this thing in five cycles. Charge and discharge. And hopefully that's going to break up some of the dendrite crystals. Alright, so I'm going to cycle this thing right now. I had that program loaded, cycle, three, or, that should be one cell. Actually, no, eight cells. Ah, so, save that. So, and then I'm going to charge it 1.5 amp and discharge it 1 amp. Cycle five times. Alright, it's doing its thing. And the cool thing about that is it does graphs, too, so I can see what's actually happening. Alright, awesome. So I can go back, I can view the milliamp hours, voltage, current, you know, that kind of stuff. So that's, that's pretty awesome. And that's actually why I got this charger. Alright, so my first charge and discharge cycle is complete. And uh, all right, let's test this thing, put it in the drill. Alright, this is the first shot. Uh, not great. Yeah, 
and that's well I guess let me throw up my regular charger see what happens all right so using my little discharge light bulb right here I was able to get this thing down to milliamps let me see if we have millivolts let's try that hopefully you can see that in the thing there so 38 millivolts that's actually what I wanted. I wanted to totally drain this thing. So I had let it go for like a day or so, or maybe two days probably. All right, so now I'm gonna charge it back up, but I suspect this thing's not gonna be even detected as a battery on my charger here. All right, so this thing's charging that totally dead battery. That's actually one of the reasons why I actually like this charger over the ISDT, is this thing actually wouldn't charge. If the battery is below a certain volt, it wouldn't even charge the battery. I'm also running a pretty cool program called Log Viewer, but um, all right. All right, so the first charge is done with that totally dead battery, and in Log Viewer, it pulled uh, about 550 milliamp hours. Cool thing about this thing is you can do like a voltage, current, capacity, so I can see actually how it's charging and spiking up and down. All right, guys, so a couple days of cycling. This thing has way more juice. Yeah, way better. So what I was doing is I was totally discharging and charging with this light bulb and my, my uh, meter here. And the whole point of this video is to break up the dendrite crystals in the cells. So um, I'll put a link on the uh, where you can research dendrite crystals and how they affect NICAP batteries, but cool. I think I'll keep this on my test bench. Well, I might do a couple more cycles. I don't know. God, so much better though. All right. Cool.